Hello everyone, welcome back to the Key Concepts in System Design tutorial series. Today, we're diving into the topic of consistent hashing. Consistent hashing is a crucial technology in distributed systems, especially when it comes to load balancing and distributed caching. It can significantly improve both the efficiency and stability of a system. Let's take a closer look at this technology. To start, let's simplify what consistent hashing is. Consistent hashing is a distributed hashing algorithm designed to address the problem of data redistribution when nodes are added or removed. With traditional hashing algorithms, adding or removing nodes often results in a lot of data needing to be redistributed, which can lead to system instability and performance degradation. Consistent hashing, on the other hand, reduces this data redistribution through a special approach. Let's start with a simple example. Imagine we have a distributed caching system with four nodes. Node 0, Node 1, Node 2, and Node 3. Our goal is to distribute user request data across these nodes. In a traditional setup, we use a hash algorithm to convert the key of each request into a hash value, then take the modulus of the number of nodes to decide which node will store the data. For instance, if we have four nodes, we use the formula index equals the hash of the key, taken modulo 4. This gives us the corresponding node location. However, when we add a new node, say node 4, making the total number of nodes 5, the results of the hash modulus calculation change. This change forces a large amount of data to be redistributed, which can lead to cache invalidation and performance issues. It's worth noting that this problem occurs not only when adding nodes, but also when removing them. To illustrate this problem more clearly, I wrote a simple Java program that maps the English words for the 12 zodiac animals to different nodes using hashing and modulus. When we have four nodes, the results are as follows. Dog maps to node 0, rat maps to node 1, pig maps to node 2, and tiger maps to node 3. But when we add a new node, making it five nodes in total, the results change. Dog moves from node 0 to node 2. Rat shifts from node 1 to node 0, pig changes from node 2 to node 3, and tiger relocates from node 3 to node 2. Most other zodiac animals also change nodes, with the dragon being the only one that remains the same. In real-world scenarios, adding or removing nodes is common. For example, you might need to scale up when the data volume increases or scale down when it decreases, or some nodes might become temporarily unavailable due to failures. These changes can impact system stability. Traditional hashing algorithms struggle to handle these complexities in a distributed environment effectively. Consistent hashing addresses the data distribution problem in distributed systems by mapping nodes and data onto a logical ring. Here's how it works. First, we define a range for hash values, typically from 0 to 2 to the power of 32 minus 1, which we call the hash space. Imagine this range as a circular ring. On this ring, we start by mapping the nodes to specific positions. We do this by calculating the hash value for each node, such as using the node's IP address or name to generate a hash value, and then placing them at their corresponding positions on the ring. Next, we calculate the hash value for the data we want to store, and map it to the ring as well. Finally, the data is stored on the first node encountered in the clockwise direction. This is the basic principle of consistent hashing. Let's illustrate this with an example. For simplicity, imagine our ring has only 16 positions, from 0 to 15. We have four nodes, n1, n2, n3, and n4. Assume that through hashing, n1 maps to position 3, n2 maps to position 7, n3 maps to position 12, and N4 maps to position 15. If we want to store a piece of data with the key K1, we calculate its hash value, which we assume is 9. The first node encountered in the clockwise direction from position 9 is N3, so K1 should be stored on N3. Similarly, if the hash value of K2 is 5, it should be stored on N2. For K3 with a hash value of 2, it should go to N1, and K4 with a hash value of 4 should also be stored on N2. Now, if we add a new node, N5, with a hash value of 11, the situation changes. K1, which was originally on N3, 
will now be stored on N5 as N5 becomes the first node encountered in the clockwise direction from position 9. Thus, K1 needs to be moved to N5. The data range affected by this change is only from positions 8 to 11. Other data remains unchanged. Similarly, if we remove node N1, then K3, which was on N1, will now be stored on N2, as N2 becomes the first node encountered in the clockwise direction from position 2. The affected data range in this case is only from positions 0 to 3, and other data remains unaffected. Keep in mind that this example uses only 16 positions, so the hash space is quite small and hash collisions can easily occur. In practice, a much larger hash space is used, such as 2 to the power of 32 or 2 to the power of 64, along with hash functions that have a very low probability of collisions. This setup ensures that even with a large number of data and nodes in a distributed system, the probability of collisions remains very low. In summary, consistent hashing minimizes the amount of data that needs to be moved when nodes are added or removed, typically involving only about one nth of the data. This effectively reduces data migration and helps maintain system stability. In practical applications, consistent hashing can sometimes lead to uneven data distribution. Imagine we have three nodes, node 1, node 2, node 3, mapped to positions 3, 6, and 8 on the hash ring. In this case, node 2 is responsible for data between positions 4 and 6, node 3 handles data between 7 and 8, and node 1 manages data from positions 9 to 15 and 0 to 3. As you can see, node 1 has a much larger range of responsibility compared to nodes 2 and 3, which results in node 1 being much more heavily loaded, while the other nodes are lighter. This imbalance can affect the system's performance and stability. To address this issue, consistent hashing introduces the concept of virtual nodes. Virtual nodes mean that each physical node on the hash ring can be mapped to multiple positions. For example, we can create three virtual nodes for node 1, such as N11, N12, N13, and map them to different positions on the ring. Nodes 2 and 3 can also have their own virtual nodes distributed in the same manner. This way, each physical node does not handle a large contiguous block of data, but instead distributes the load across multiple virtual nodes. As the number of virtual nodes increases, the hash ring becomes more finely segmented, and data is more evenly distributed across the nodes. In practice, the number of virtual nodes used is often much greater than three to ensure a balanced data distribution, leading to more stable load distribution and more reliable system performance. To better understand the consistent hashing algorithm, let's look at a simplified Java implementation. In this example, we use TreeMap to represent the hash ring. TreeMap is not just a map for storing key value pairs, it also sorts the keys, which helps us find the closest node on the hash ring to our target. Each physical node has multiple virtual nodes, controlled by the number of replicas parameter. We use the SHA256 algorithm to generate hash values. This is a commonly used cryptographic hash function that ensures data distribution is more random and even. Next, let's see how to add a server to the hash ring. The add server method is responsible for adding a server to the ring. To ensure more even load distribution, we create multiple virtual nodes for each server. The names of the virtual nodes are the server name followed by a number, like server colon zero, server colon one. Different names generate different hash values, so the virtual nodes are distributed across different positions on the ring. Now, let's look at how to remove a server. The remove server method removes the server and all its virtual nodes from the hash ring. When removing a node, we also calculate the node's hash value first. To find out which server should store or serve a query, we use the getServer method. This method finds the server where the data should be stored. It first calculates the hash value of the key, then uses the tailMap method to find the closest node in the clockwise direction. If there is no node with a hash value greater than or equal to the calculated hash value, we wrap around to the beginning of the ring and return the first server. Finally, the hashing part. The compute hash method uses the SHA256 algorithm to convert a string into a hash value. 
For simplicity, it only takes the first eight bytes and combines them into a 64-bit long integer. With this Java implementation, you can see that the ring in consistent hashing is actually a logical concept. It can be implemented using data structures like TreeMap or others, such as concurrent skip list map. Although TreeMap is a tree structure, it automatically sorts the nodes. If you connect these nodes sequentially from smallest to largest, with the last node connecting back to the first, you form a closed structure. Unfolding this structure gives you a hash ring. Consistent hashing is widely used in distributed systems, and here are a few typical scenarios. 1. Distributed caching. In distributed caching systems like Memcached and Redis, consistent hashing ensures that when cache nodes are added or removed, only a small portion of the data is redistributed. This prevents large-scale cache invalidation and improves system stability and performance. 2. Distributed databases. In databases like Cassandra and DynamoDB, consistent hashing helps distribute data evenly across multiple nodes. When nodes fail or new ones are added, only a small amount of data needs to be reassigned, reducing the load on the system. 3. Load balancing. Consistent hashing ensures that when server nodes change, most requests can still be directed to the same server, minimizing the need to reassign requests and improving service stability. 4. Content Delivery Networks, CDN. Consistent hashing is used to select the best server to store and distribute content. Even if nodes are added or removed, the system can ensure efficient and stable access to content. To wrap up this lesson, let's review what we've covered. Compared to traditional hashing algorithms, consistent hashing offers clear advantages in distributed systems. First, it improves fault tolerance and stability. When a node fails or is removed from the hash ring, only the data related to that node needs to be moved to the nearest node, while the rest of the data remains unaffected. Second, it enhances scalability. When adding new nodes, there's no need to rebalance all the data, as only a small portion needs to be migrated. Lastly, by introducing virtual nodes, consistent hashing achieves load balancing, ensuring that data is evenly distributed across multiple servers. If you found this lesson helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to the ByteVigor channel to make sure you don't miss any future content. See you in the next lesson.